Hello Internet, Sitting Duke here. Tonight I want to step over all the parts I have that I intend to use to make a Voron 2.4-2500 cubed. For those who don't know, Voron Design is not a company, it is a group of people who like printers and who occasionally agree on how to design one. And when they do agree, they release all the CAD files open source together with a BOM, Bill of Materials, Assembly Instructions and so on. I'm going to build a 2.4, which is a core XY where the bed stays stationary and the gantry moves. I expect this will be an exciting and challenging build. Disclaimer, no one paid me to make this video. All views are my own, all borrowed from the dog. And all toys shown were purchased with my own money because the dog is flat broke. Most of the parts here came from a box named Formbot a vendor on AliExpress. Other parts are from a box named Triangle Lab, a vendor on AliExpress. And the final set of parts have been substituted from a box named DigiKey, a vendor not on AliExpress. All of the printed parts are in eSun ABS Plus, printed right here on my Prusa, just out of frame. Because order is arbitrary, I will cover off the parts in the order of the bomb generated by the Voron Design website. Section 1. Fasteners. One past criticism of the Formbot box is the tendency to an exact count of fasteners. No spares. Well, that's not true here. Excepting the knurled nuts for bed spaces, everything has spares. The least being 2 and the most being 20. The median was 4 and the average 5 in fractions. I also got some M3x18s that are not in the bomb. So if someone in a warehouse in China is missing 5 M3x18s and has no idea where they went, they're in my house. Most of the black oxide parts were coated in a shipping oil. Thankfully my set was not malodorous, but that has happened before. So I degreased and cleaned them while counting them. They may well rust sooner because I stripped the grease, but it also means I will have fewer oil stains on my printer. Section 2. Motion. All exact counts here. Belts are pre-cut and lengths are as given in the bomb. Belts say gates. Bearings say nothing. Linear rails are unbranded. They also came with a light shipping oil. So these were degreased. Rinsed in isopropyl alcohol to remove the degreaser. And then repacked with NGLI2 grease. I used 3 grams and have 497 grams left over. Maybe the lawnmower would like some. The one shaft for the D end stop is not ground. The four shafts for the Z drives are D shaped for their entire length. The BMG extruder came in this little cup. Section 3. Electronics. Six NEMA motors, branded Alkida, and a datasheet were included in the box. I can't easily test if the stated figures are accurate. Three limit switches, go clicky. Inductive probe is a Zongdi brand, PL05N2. This means it should sense 5mm off a steel bed, or in this case, the spring steel plate, and it should head crash the aluminium sheet. Recently, a few people on the Discord have reported issues with wires shorting out here where the colour changes. So we shall see. Bowden hot end kit, here. Heater is 19.2 ohms, at, which is 30 watts. But at least one person on the Discord commented, their 40 watt heater also scopes at 19.2 ohms. I also own some 50 watt heaters from Triangle Lab. They scope at 14.9 ohms, which calculates to 40 watts. So we shall see. The kit's thermistor is also from Triangle Lab and says NTC100K. B3950. I also have some more 
104NT, the Misters, also from Triangle Lab. And to round out the set of Triangle Lab, I have a Dragon Hot End. Once upon a time, it had a groove mount up here. We learned the hard way that the included ball wrench will round the screws holding that down. So use the short end to break tension and use the ball end to unscrew completely. There probably is a use for groove mount, but not on my Voron. The fans say sun on. The Mini 12864 is from Big Tree Tech and has the duck. Very important. Note the EXP1 and EXP2 headers may be reversed. So depending on the MCU board, the ribbon cables might need to be flipped. No biggie, but something to watch out for on page 82 of the instructions. The kit came with this 240 volt inlet. Illuminated switch, single fuse, which came pre-installed. I can't make out if the fuse is 4 amps, 7 amps, or 10 amps. For 240 volts, 4 amps will cover an 800 watt printer. For 110 volt countries, 7 or 8 amps may be required. I will quite likely swap in this inlet. Fused line and neutral separate switch, not illuminated, but with radio frequency filters to reduce the electrical noise coming into the printer and noise going out of the printer. It has been covered in Discord that the printed part is different for these two. So that is a thing. Optional keystone jack for wireline ethernet in black. Raspberry Pi 4B. This one has 2 gigabytes of RAM and FormBot included a 16 gigabyte micro SD fingernail to run it. No SKR. As Ben has noted repeatedly, the world has run out. I have two on order. They are currently on a boat somewhere in the Pacific, so they are not appearing in this video. No USB cables either. Power supplies. Here is a Meanwell 200 watt 24 volt which can be adjusted here. Note the PCBs is 350 here. So they use the same board for multiple power supply designs. I always mess this up but the internet tells me these little blue guys are Y safety capacitors from the primary side to the secondary side or from phase to ground. While the big blue guy is an X safety capacitor between line and neutral. X and this AC choke form an input filter at 240 volts. A very similar circuit to the filtered sw input switch here. The full bridge rectifier is here, followed by the go bang switch. This supply uh, fails the 80 plus efficiency rating because at 240 volts the go bang switch disables two diodes and they only have a half bridge rectifier. Sorry electro boom. So the power factor of this supply is unlikely to be over 70%. So 170 volts DC is then stored in these two capacitors, 330 microfarads rated at 200 volts, and they smooth out the pulsating mess that is 50 hertz half wave rectified DC. A small flyback here with these two powers the switch mode IC that I assume is under the circuit board here. The main flyback is here. Switched 169 volt input, PWM 24 volt output using these active parts here. Optocouplers inform the switch mode circuit what the output side is doing. That. Only two of the five actives are populated. 
suggesting this board has a dual rail cousin, plus and minus 24 volts, or 24 volts and 12 volts at the same time, probably. A large DC choke here, probably for noise or output quality, and two of five bulk capacitors here, rated 470 microfarads at 35 volts. No plastic cover came with this one, but I can see screw holes, and Thingiverse is only a mouse click away. Whirlwind of a modern switch mode power supply. Shiny. Here is a Meanwell 25 watt 5 volt power supply. No go bang switch this time. Similar idea as before. AC here. Safety capacitors here. DC choke and noise filter. 327 volts DC here and a 400 volt capacitor. Flyback here. Actives here and here. 5 volts DC here and adjustment here. Again, set this to below 5.2 volts before attaching a Pi to avoid having a bad day. Formbot provided a gold SAP 4825D 25 amp rated SSR here. I expect this is a genuine part and while I won't trust it with an inductive load at all, or with a resistive load past 8 amps, that is only partly because of the heat seeking issues. But it is moot, because DigiKey provided a 20 amp Omron here. The 10 amp was sold out, and the 20 amp Omron was cheaper than the cryogen down here. So, while there are many SSR like it, this one is mine. Again, it says 20 amps on the tin, but that is for a substantial heatsink. The data sheet states the free air limit is 6 amps, so on the DIN rail we're probably left with 8 amps again. The 300 watt heated bed is less than 1.3 amps. There is speculation on the internet that SSR lasts longer when driven less hard. 1.3 amps load for a 20 amp switch is well less hard. Bat diode, power supply cable, suitable for Australia or New Zealand. I trust this with 7 amps, so again, fuse choice may matter. Thermal fuse. The bomb sets out 120 degrees. This one states 125 degrees. ABS prints at 110 degrees, so should be fine. This will either be screwed directly to the underside of the bed, or held against this heated mat with high temperature adhesive. And this is a one-time fuse. Over 125 degrees, it blows. It must be replaced, which is a safety feature to stop a fault turning the heater on and off repeatedly. We start and end electronics with motors. Here is a pancake for the extruder. Almost forgot the stepper motor drivers. These are TMC 2209. They are labeled Big Tree Tech version 1.2 and they already have these little blue heat sinks soldered to them. Section 5, frame. Corner triangles. Din rails. 10 millimeters shorter than bomb. Extrusions. Black anodized aluminium. All measure the same as the bomb. 10 of the 370 are tapped. About 12 millimeters on one and were coated in a rather unpleasant cutting fluid that I removed with isoprop. The four of the 430s are drilled clear on two sides. Again, cutting fluid stains. Again, isoprop fixed. I also had to rub these holes with a needle file to clean out the last of the swath. To my uncalibrated thumb, 
extrusions of a given length are all the same length, or within a few thou. Not perfect, but they were cheap. Also, these grooves are 6 to 6.1 millimeters deep, not the 6.5 millimeters on a genuine Mitsumi extrusion. Section 6. Miscellaneous. Sponge, pretending to be a filter. Bowden coupler. PTFE tube for spool holding. One spare here. Very high bond tape, says 3M. Loctite and lube were not provided, so I sourced them locally. Wire harness tape, not Tessa, but is fabric. I also got a bonus roll of Yong Yu branded foam tape. I guess that will go on the panels. Ten neodity magnets, so there's four spares. These make friends easily, as magnets do, so I'm sure I will put them someplace safe before I get to them in the instructions. The one meter PTFE tube measures 1.02 meters, so bonus extra. Section 7, cables. Zip ties, 40 in the bomb and 40 given, no spares. Cable, 20 AWG and 24. Silicone, I've not measured it. Spade terminals, bomb calls for seven female. I have 10 female and 10 male in red. So that's useful. JST in a kit. 10 of each size, so spares again. Microfit in a plastic bag. 5 of each size, so spares. Drag chain is branded W-I-J-I-Y-E. It opens by inserting a screwdriver here. Don't touch this side. And much spare is provided. 10 centimeters of the 10 by 15. And enough of the 10 by 10 to make a third chain. Feels to be nylon or similar. Section eight, panels. The black coroplast were scuffed and dusty Protective sheet on both sides appears to have prevented the worst of the damage. They measure to the bomb. The clear acrylic sheet was also dusty, less scuffed, and protected both sides. They also measure to the bomb. Panels. Section 9. Build plate. Heated mat. Vivedino brand. 300 watt. 200 by 200. Looks a lot like a Canevo with a different logo. Already has 3M, 468 MP, 200 MP adhesive on it. I have... 254 by 254 of spring steel plate. Textured on this side and smooth on this side. Unfortunately, the smooth side is already damaged. Clear through the film. So we'll see how that holds up. I have... 255 by 254 of 3M300 LSE sheet, which is not the 468MP in the bomb. I have an 8mm thick aluminium bed, machined for screws here, and extra holes for a ground lug and for the thermal fuse on the back. I threw a straight edge across this 
and shone a light behind it to test for flatness. But that was boring. So I used my feeler gauges and attempted to fit under the ruler. The 0.06mm gauge never fit. The 0.04mm gauge fit in four or five places. And the 0.03mm gauge fit in a dozen places. So, I conclude that this plate, while cold, is not a taco, but is more like a quilt made of hills and valleys. Of course, what matters is how it heats up. Section 0. Printed parts. And here we have about 1.5 kg of printed parts, covering all the functional parts required to assemble the printer. So, there we have it. A random and disjointed wander across the pile of parts I hope to assemble slowly and carefully into a complete printer. One that will be faster and more expensive than my Prusa, while having an equal or better quality. Stuff and places and things. Thank you for watching. Interact with the algorithm if you want. But for now, I am signing off.